I've had a WorkSharp 3000 for a really long time. It was my first real power sharpener before I discovered the Toramec and never looked back. Even today, I still pull out the WorkSharp for specific tasks. I like to use it to flatten the backs of new chisels and plain irons, for example. And it's not a bad sharpener, especially for the money, but it's not great for a lot of the tasks that we need to do as woodworkers. And I think that they made it worse when the manufacturer discontinued two key accessories. Their large blade platform, this thing here on top, and they used to have a Tormek style bar attachment. Without this platform, you can't sharpen most plain irons on the WorkSharp because this chisel port is only so wide. You used to be able to get the platform accessory and add it to the top like this one is here, and then you could use a jig to sharpen a tool on top of the disc. But when they got rid of this, you lost that ability. Instead, I think they require you to use their little bar accessory, but this is a tough way to do it. If you're trying to hold an accurate angle with the tool on this bar, on the work sharp, you're fighting against the rotation of the disc, which is pulling the tool away from the bar and to the side. It's not the same as on a bench grinder where the wheel is spinning down towards the bar, which kind of holds it in place. Also, when they eliminated the Tormek bar attachment, that was disappointing because Tormek makes great, accurate jigs, and the ability to use them with the work sharp made this system that much more versatile, especially for wood turners and carvers. I've just never been comfortable holding a tool beneath the slotted wheel, and slotted wheel sandpaper is ridiculously expensive. But this isn't a video to bash the work sharp. It's a video to help those of you who bought one and it's been collecting dust because it just cannot handle some of the tools that woodworkers need. Actually, I started dealing with this almost a decade ago. I came up with an idea way back then to modify the work sharp by building a little cabinet that included disc storage in the front and a platform on the top. That platform eliminated the need for this accessory even back then, and it still allowed you to be able to sharpen from the top with a regular jig. I also described how to use MDF discs so you could not only quickly switch between sandpaper grits without buying a bunch of glass discs, but you could put polishing compounds directly on the MDF, and those would eliminate the need for the expensive ultra-fine grit sandpaper and honing films. That video also included an idea for a Tormek style bar so you could use Tormek jigs. That was a pretty popular video back in its day. About a quarter million people have watched it and thousands of them have downloaded the project instructions that we actually still have on our website. In fact, I recommend you check them out if you have a Tormek because the instructions for the upgrades in those will really be useful to you. But here we are, a decade and hundreds of thousands of new viewers later, and while some things haven't changed, others have, and there are parts of that old video that need updating. I'm not going to rebuild the cabinet or even remake the whole video because the original contains loads of great info. Plus some, I think, will find it interesting to see how different Stumpy Nub's videos were back in those early days of YouTube when videos were still filmed on little cassette tapes and nobody had $5,000 cameras and $1,000 microphones. So what I'm gonna do is take a few minutes right now to tell you some of the things I would change about the old WorkSharp setup. Then I'm going to show you a version of the original video, which I've edited down to just the best parts. So the first thing I would change in what I made in that video is the Tormek bar. But you need to know some background on this. This was supposed to be a homemade setup. So my original plan was to track down some 12 millimeter bar stock, which is what you need for the Tormek jigs. This was before Amazon and a lot of other online sources. You just couldn't find 12 millimeter bar stock around here. Jet had a Tormek knockoff sharpener at that time, which also used a 12 millimeter bar, but they were discontinuing their system back in 2010. And so their accessories were going on sale. You could get a 12 millimeter bar accessory made by Jet for just 20 bucks. And that is what I used in my WorkSharp upgrade. Obviously, that supply didn't last long, so that feature is no longer available. Nowadays, there are sources where you can get 12 millimeter bar stock online, and you could make a bar 
for your work sharp. You'd have to find a way to mount it to the cabinet and make it adjustable. I think though, it's better to just spend a little extra and get one of these. This is Tormex bench grinder bar setup. And what, the reason why I think this is better is because you could easily extend that top on the cabinet so you could mount this next to it. And it has built in their mounting system and their micro adjust system so it's all taken care of for you. A much easier solution. I'll link to this below the video. Another thing I'd change in that original design is I would eliminate all the sandpaper, which means fewer MDF discs. And that's because you can now buy CBN discs for the WorkSharp. CBN is almost as hard as diamond, it won't overheat your tool, and it lasts forever. These discs are not cheap, but you'll spend that much in disposable sandpaper before you know it. I'll link to these below the video too. I would still supplement these CBN discs with polishing compounds on MDF because that gives you a mere finish without buying the expensive fine grit papers and honing films. And those MDF discs worked out great for that. Some people though have asked me about buildup, getting the, the polishing compound on the disc and then fighting buildup. First of all, don't over apply it. In my original video, I over applied it a little bit. It doesn't need to be caked on there. Just give it a scribble, cover the whole surface, and as you use it, you're going to generate heat with your tool, which will kind of melt it and spread it out on the disc. If it is caked on and not perfectly smooth, take an old tool and use that aggressively to build up heat and to spread it out. If that doesn't work because it's really caked on, you can even hold the tool perpendicular while the disc is running and use it to scrape off the excess. Finally, I would build my cabinet out of better materials if I had to do it again. I used scraps of junk that I had on hand at the time, and it worked, but it looked like crap. I've seen some really nice viewer-built versions, and I don't know, I guess things have changed and I just feel like spending a little more time and getting things nice. We also have a video that I made just three years ago about WorkSharp tips and tricks. Now, it discusses some of the things like this platform, which again, you can't get anymore. But there are loads of tips in that video that help with some of the common problems people have with their WorkSharps. I'll link to that below, I'll link to the other videos below, and the accessories I've been talking about in the description below this video and pinned to the top of the comments. Now, without further ado, let's see the original blue collar woodworking video about upgrading your WorkSharp 3000. It all starts with a stand. This one's made out of MDF scraps. I knew there was a reason I can't throw all this stuff away. It works great for making jigs and projects like this. Now the design is pretty simple. This here is going to be a drawer to hold all of our accessories. Here we're going to have slots to put all of the discs. Oh yeah, we're going to get rid of the glass ones and make 6 inch discs out of MDF. And it's glued together with a platform on the top which acts as the wide blade attachment that WorkSharp charged 60 bucks for. There's also a simple drawer that I'm making out of plywood scraps. This is going to hold things from jigs to the buffing compounds that we're going to use instead of sandpaper. The design really doesn't have to be very complicated. Just slap something together, glue it up, and use all those clamps that you have in the rack that we built in the last episode. If you didn't see it, you should check it out. Some quarter inch plywood squares also scraps work great for making slots to put all the discs in. That's why we cut those grooves in the sides. We just slide them in and we have enough room to hold 11 discs. Before you mount the work sharp on its platform you have to take off the little rubber feet. They're going to make it move around when you want it to be stationary. Put on the top and mark around the circle where the disc is going to go. Then you can take it over to your bandsaw and cut it out. This is going to give you the maximum surface for using a jig on top of the system. Of course, you want that disc on top to be completely flush with the top of your case. So use some washers to shim under each foot, checking it with the straight edge to make sure there's no tilt in any direction. And then we made our own half inch MDF discs to use with sandpaper and buffing compound so we can have like 10 different grits all at the same time without having to peel that paper off and stick new on. The sandpaper for the WorkSharp is pretty expensive. On the coarse grits, you can just buy six inch sanding discs from anywhere, but the finer stuff can get pretty pricey quick. Our solution is to use polishing compounds. 
You can find this stuff in different grits all over the place, all the way through red, brown, and white, which brings you to the same mirror edge you can get with a fine sharpening stone. Scribble it on both sides of one of those MDF discs. Use a different one for each compound. It costs just pennies, and since the grid is about 220 on the coarsest, you'll never have to use sandpaper again except to repair a badly damaged edge. It even works for wider blades. Get one of those cheap angle jigs that you would use with the Scary Sharp system and use that platform that we built. The honing compound on the top will put a mirror edge and a micro bevel on any plane or chisel. And switching from one to the next is really fast, especially since you have enough discs in your holder to accommodate several grits of sandpaper and buffing compounds. Lapping the back as you go is no problem either. You don't even have to take off the jig. Just flip it upside down and use some light pressure. So, we've saved a lot of money. We've eliminated the need to buy more of those $20 discs. We've eliminated the need to buy that expensive honing film by using the buffing compound. And we've made our own version of the wide blade sharpening attachment that saves us 60 bucks there. Now we got to figure out how to use those great Tormek jigs with the WorkSharp system. WorkSharp does make a Tormek attachment for about $60, but we found a better solution. This is the Jet Sharpening System bar extension. It's the exact same size as the Tormek, but you can remove this thing. I put it on a couple of pieces of steel rod on the back. That allows us to adjust it up and down, but it also allows us to take it off and put it on our bench grinder or on our wet sharpener so you don't have to buy separate bar attachments for each of your machines. And this thing only costs $20. The best part is its design. These knobs allow you to tilt it if you use a smaller rod in the hole. Then you can take these lock collars, which are available at any hardware store, and lock it in place when you get it level. That way when you remove it and take it onto another machine, it's easy to slip right back in place without having to realign. The reason why I really like using this jet attachment is because it saves you the $60 for the WorkSharp version, but also it can be removed and taken over to the bench grinder, which Tormac wants $80 for that attachment. And then I can take it from the bench grinder to my little uh, inexpensive wet sharpener, which would save me another $80 jig, but I have the wet sharpening capacity of the $700 Tormac for a few bucks less. Mail call. You know, I get a lot of emails. Some of them are good. Some of them are kind of dumb. But I try to answer them when I can. So let's do a few. Dear Stumpy, what is the origin of the hand plane? I'm glad you asked, because I'm a little bit of a history buff. I'm really good at this kind of stuff. See, the hand plane was invented in Ohio in the early 1900s by a man named Wilbur Redenbacher. Now, this is really a great story. You see, Wilbur's brother was an inventor, too. In fact, he was named Orville, and he was working on some other kind of plane. I'm not sure what it was. I don't think it really took off. Anyway, Wilbur used his brother's plane factory to make hand planes. And it's interesting that the hand plane was originally designed not as a woodworking tool, but get this, to make bicycles. Of course, nobody really remembers Wilbur Redenbacher. They remember his older brother Orville, uh, who of course went on to invent popcorn. Let's do another one. Dear Stumpy, is it okay to use nails in making fine furniture? Absolutely not. Every good woodworker knows you should never use a nail when you can use a drywall screw. One more. Dear Stumpy, what's the expansion ratio of a soft maple at 90% humidity as compared to hard maple at 70% humidity, assuming equal barometric pressure? I think we're out of time. So in behalf of me, Maya and Puddles, the shop dogs, Everybody else here at the Stumpy Dubs Workshop, sit back, have a gold one, because you've earned it, my friend.
it, you'd be turning it all the time. I, you, there's not enough room for. I'll get it. For it a little bit. All right. Let me let me try looking through the second lens. Do you mean to make the text bigger? No. Mustache. Easy to find sandpaper in the roll. Good grief, mustache! How many times do we have to do this? Forget it, Sash! Some folks are a pleasure to work with, like Ken Rizzo over at woodturnerswonders.com. That's where I get my turning stuff, like sanding supplies and CBN wheels for my grinder. Seriously, if you haven't seen what CBN wheels can do for you, you are missing out. I'll put a link below this video. Use it and tell Ken I sent you. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up, or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.